Breaking news, Nikon has leaked a brand new camera, the Z30, and maybe bigger news, the Nikon Z9 is Sony inside. And people say it doesn't matter, but I wanna prove that it does, that it is actually very important. Right after I thank our sponsor, Squarespace. You need something better than just social media, just filled with ads and controlled by algorithms. You need your own space, your own domain, your own professional email address. Take total control. Build your own brand at squarespace.com slash Tony. I have like four or five different Squarespace websites. Every time I start a new project, I set up a private domain for it and I use Squarespace for it because it is incredibly easy to look so professional. Try it out for free at squarespace.com slash Tony and use the coupon Tony and get 10% off. Thanks Squarespace. I'll tell you about the Z30 in just a second, but first I wanna tell you about the sensor in the Nikon Z9. Scrolling through my news feed, I saw an article saying that the Z9 sensor was actually manufactured by Sony Semiconductor. And I scrolled right past it. I thought, who cares who makes the sensor? It's just a component inside. And then I saw a second article about it and I scrolled past it. After about the eighth article about the Nikon Z9 sensor popped up into my news feed, I thought, this isn't how people behave when something doesn't matter. This must matter if people are talking about it. So I started reading the articles and you know what? They all said one thing in the comments. They said, it doesn't matter who makes the sensor. What matters is the output. And that I have learned recently is completely wrong. Let's go to the garage. I like cars. Chelsea likes cars and we have a few for different occasions, but I'm going to show you my favorite. This is my totally nondescript 2008 Toyota Tundra. One of the reasons I like it, it has the TRD off-road package that stands for Toyota Racing Development. I really like Toyota Racing Development. I could have bought a Ford F-150. It's got the torque and the horsepower. It beats the Tundra in just about every way, except I have a particular affection for Toyota, a little love for the brand that extends beyond the rational, something that is not the output of a machine, but a connection to the history. See, I wasn't born with this white hair. I was once a little boy who had a hundred Hot Wheels cars, and I loved the little Toyota trucks jumping over the dunes. I just thought it was so cool. And these little TRD stickers, they don't add any horsepower. They just bring me back to that little kid who loved Hot Wheels. Cameras too are more than soulless machines that can be assessed entirely based on the output from the device. They have a history, a connection. I'm gonna talk more about that, but let me show you the camera that I have in here. I installed this digital review mirror so I wouldn't run over people in reverse. And the reason I picked this particular model is it was advertised as having a Sony sensor in the camera. So why did my rear view mirror brag about having a Sony sensor? But Nikon didn't mention it. You would think with all the specs that they list, the bits of dynamic range, the frames per second, the megapixels, surely the actual make and manufacturer of the sensor, the heart of the camera is of paramount importance, right? Nikon didn't want you to know. They hid it for a reason, a really good reason. Photography is about tradition. And when we think of Nikon, we think back to the 1950s and 1960s and even 70s when Nikon was the number one manufacturer, the company that made the SLR and revolutionized, especially serious professional photography, unseating Leica. Photography is about tradition, but the cameras themselves are about craftsmanship. That's something that the Japanese in particular take incredible pride in. Nikon knows this. Check out the ad for the Nikon ZFC. Do you see it bragging about specs? No, they want you to think about Nikon's long history. They want you to notice the beautiful craftsmanship on this device. It is not something that can be measured by the megapixels or the color bits or the dynamic range that it outputs. It is something more. It is a connection to the past something bigger than ourselves. Look, this is my Leica M10D and it's the most expensive camera that I own. It used, it goes for about $7,000. It has 24 megapixels, which is a pretty small number. It has, I don't know, two, three frames per second. I don't even know. The autofocus system, non-existent, no autofocus. How many millions of dots does the rear screen have? Zero, there's no rear screen. The specs on this are 
absolute garbage. And yet this is what I have around my neck during my most important moments, my family moments, because this has history and heritage and craftsmanship. This design has changed almost not at all since before World War II. And in fact, this particular camera was made in Wetzlar, Germany, the same place Leica has been for just about a century. When the Nazis took over the Leica factory during World War II, they set up the Lights Freedom Train. It was in Wetzlar, Germany, where lights brought so many Jewish people through the tunnel, saving them from an absolutely awful fate. This was made in that same place. It is a connection to that, and using it reminds me of something bigger than myself. That's the reason Leica cost so much. I didn't realize this a decade ago when we started this YouTube channel. We reviewed a Leica camera, and I just hated it. But then we studied the history of Leica, and I developed a better appreciation for the entire world of photography. And now I dropped seven grand on my own just to have a piece of that. Make no mistake, all the camera companies get this. Canon still makes their cameras in Japan, and Canon makes their own sensors. Sony doesn't have the long history of Canon or Nikon or Leica, so they do rely on the bits and the output a lot more in their own marketing. But they still make their own sensors, and they still really care about the craftsmanship. This is a problem for Nikon. Not only do they not make their cameras in Japan, but they don't even make their own sensors. But the sensor is the heart of the camera. It is what captures the light bouncing off of your loved ones and forever immortalizes it. Not only that, but knowing that they get their sensor from their biggest competitor means that there's not going to be any secret sauce inside of it. There's no technical aspect of it that's ever going to outdo Sony. Okay, Nikon has used sensors from other manufacturers for a long time, and it hasn't stopped me from loving Nikon. But there's something especially painful about the fact that they get it from Sony. You see, it was Sony that pushed Nikon from number two behind Canon to number three. And now Nikon relies on Sony to make their sensors because they can't do it themselves. It's okay to use a Nikon. I love the Z9, but if you can't admit that that stings just a little bit, then maybe you aren't completely in touch with your feelings. Here's another car example. Growing up, the Supra was the coolest sports car, and recently Toyota brought it back. But you know what they did? They had BMW provide the engine. And I love BMWs, as you might know, but I would not be interested in this car. And whenever I see an enthusiast discuss it, they always say, oh, I know it's a BMW, but because it doesn't have that connection, because it's an admission that Toyota couldn't put a decent sports car together. They had to rely on a competitor. Oh, if you still think it doesn't matter at all that Nikon uses Sony sensors, then tell me about it. Let's talk about the new Nikon Z30. Thanks to NikonRumors.com for leaking this new camera. To understand the importance of this camera, you need to know that Nikon recently discontinued two lines of their DSLRs, the two entry-level lines, the D3500, the D5600 lineups. This is my rendering of the Nikon Z30. This is the entry-level interchangeable lens camera. This is the camera that's going to be front and center at the Walmart electronics department. This is the camera that somebody will get the day before they go on vacation because they want something that takes better pictures than their phone. And we don't have that much information, but I can infer a lot based on the naming. After all, the Nikon Z50 APS-C camera seems to be directly connected to the Nikon D5500, D5600 series cameras. Thus, the Nikon Z30 is probably a direct descendant from the Nikon D30X100 series. The rumors say it'll be APS-C, and Nikon rumors are saying it'll probably have a 30 megapixel sensor because Nikon is no longer going to make 24 megapixel sensors. Well, of course, they wouldn't be making the sensor. We already discussed that. I actually don't believe that they'll go all the way to 30 megapixels because I think that would start to compete with some of their full-frame cameras. It doesn't feel right to me, but Nikon Rumors is rarely wrong, so you decide which you think is going to be right. And my guess on the price is that it's going to be about $800 for a kit because the Z50 right now is positioned at $1,000 for the kit, and they would need to come in below that if they're going to position this low. If you notice my rendering, 
It's very much like a Nikon Z50 in the body, but I think they're going to put the flip out screen on the side because of course that is the right place for it. And to help position it below the Z50 lineup, I think they'll remove the electronic viewfinder. When I hand my camera to anyone under about 25, they never use the viewfinder. They always just hold it out at arm's length like this because they've already learned how to use a camera from using their smartphone. Thus, a lot of younger people don't care about the viewfinder anyway. And if they do, that'll be a good excuse to get them to pay a little bit more for the Z50 lineup. Now, there really aren't any other leaked specs that they're confident about, but I'm sure it'll have 4K at 30 frames per second and 1080 at 60 frames per second just to be competitive. The news from Nikon rumors that I'm more excited about is the possibility that we might soon see a Nikon Z8. This would be a descendant from the Nikon D850, the greatest DSLR ever made. Really my favorite camera of all time to use. I love the D850 and I originally thought the Nikon Z7 was the descendant of the D850 because, well, Nikon told me this is the mirrorless D850, but it, it wasn't. It didn't have the same feel. It didn't have that slightly bigger body that's slightly smaller than the Nikon Z9. And I think if they were to take the guts of the Nikon Z9 and put it in that old D850 body that feels so great, I think that could be an amazing Nikon Z8 and a camera I cannot wait to review. So subscribe to see that. In the comments down below, tell me how you feel about the news that Nikon is using Sony sensors in their top end camera. And tell me if you'll get the Nikon Z30 at that price or maybe recommend it to your friends for their first camera. And of course, check out our sponsor Squarespace, which makes amazing websites incredibly easy. You probably need multiple different websites for each part of your business. For example, if you do portraits and weddings, a wedding client might see some of your portraits that they don't like and you might miss out on that customer. It pays to build separate brands for different aspects of your business. Fine art, portraits, boudoir, they should each have their own domain and own brand and you can set up all your websites at squarespace.com slash Tony. It's completely free to try it out and set it up so you can see just how amazing it works. View all the analytics, set up a store, take appointments from clients. When you love it, use the coupon code Tony and you'll get 10% off. Thanks for sponsoring us and making this possible, Squarespace. Bye.